this stuff down. So what we're going to review is when we ask you guys to solve an equation, all right, the first thing we want to do, especially if that equation is not, in, is not linear, if it's higher order, quadratic, cubic, quartic, or even a higher power, the first thing we want to do is we want to set that equation equal to zero. zero. So you guys can see I have terms on both sides. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get them all to the same side. Now, I know a lot of you want to think, well, why don't you just subtract the x to the fifth, right? Um, the reason why is because when I'm factoring, I always like to have, a, um, I always like to have my, for my leading term to be positive, OK? Um, you don't have to, but it just helps out when explaining the factoring technique. So therefore, by solving this, I get 5x cubed plus 36x equals 0, OK? So everybody follow me with what I did there. All I did was I set it equal to 0. See, now I'm going to have to deduct a point. I'm sorry. Um, so we have x to the fifth minus 5x cubed plus 36x equals 0. Now we have to factor this, right? To solve, the reason why we set equal to 0 is so we can factor. So the first thing we always look at is say, all right, can I factor anything out here? Is there anything they all share? And they all share an x, right? And an x just to the first power, right? Because you can't factor anything higher than that, that lowest power. So I'm not going to do the box, but if you guys factored on an x, x times what gives you x to the fifth? x to the fourth. x times what gives you negative 5x squared, or cubed? And then x times what gives you 36x? Plus 36. OK? So now, ladies and gentlemen, I have something factored. But again, it still doesn't look like what we have all the way over there. right? I still can't factor this and say, oh, it's something easy. So then what I do is I say, well, then can I just factor it as a quadratic? Because if I can't factor it as a quadratic, then it's not factorable anyways. So we factor it as a quadratic. So we say, all right, what two numbers? Ooh. I messed up. That should have been plus. It's OK. It's OK. Hold on. Are you kidding? Sorry. So that's a positive 36x. So that becomes a negative, negative, negative. 9 times 4. Good. OK. Sorry. All right. So now we say, can we factor this? Well, to do that, again, if you guys remember your method, what we simply take here is we say, what two numbers multiply? to give me negative 36, and then add to give me negative 5. So you think of the numbers, yeah. And so it's going to be negative 9 and positive 4. Because negative 9 times positive 4 gives me negative 36. Negative 9 plus positive 4 gives me negative 5. However, ladies and gentlemen, that is not going to factor for this. So if I have x to the fourth minus 5x squared minus 36, I know that the first two terms are going to be x and x, and the last two terms are going to be minus 9 and positive 4. However, what two term, what powers of x should I be to get to x to the fourth? Squared. squared. So this is x times x squared minus 9 times x squared plus 4 equals 0. Do you guys see that? Now, what, do you guys remember the last example where you said, oh, I don't know what you know, to do when I had like five of them? Now you guys can see I have three factors. When I have three factors and I want to solve for them, what do I need to do? I need to now apply the zero, zero product, product property, which is going to tell me to do what? Set them all equal to 0. So I say x equals 0, x squared minus 9 equals 0, and x squared plus 4 <coughs> equals 0. All right? And now we just need to, we need to solve. So I have x equals 0, and then I add 9, subtract 4. And I get x squared equals 9, and x squared equals negative 4. OK? We're almost done. Now the last thing we need to do, guys, is to undo the squaring function. So to undo the square, we need to take the square root on both sides. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you take the square root, you need to do, when you take the square root, you need to do plus or minus. So the square root of 9 is? plus or minus two, uh, 3. And then negative, we can take the square root of a negative number now, right? We just need to use the imaginary unit. Uh, uh, imaginary unit i. I. So the square root of negative 4 is going to be 
x equals plus or minus 2i. So now what I want you guys to understand. We're bringing i back into the Oh, yeah. Excuse me, Ashley. OK? I don't need anything else with you. So therefore, we have, now if you guys count your zeros, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. Okay? 